right, folks, and welcome to TK Power Sports and RVs. Today we are here at Kawasaki Motor Manufacturing in lovely Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, this plant was actually put in here back in 1973, so they've been building Kawasaki's here for a long time. In this video, we're going for a tour of the plant, and you're going to see the things you'd expect, like, you know, a mule and a KRX and ATVs, but then maybe some things you don't expect, so make sure you stay tuned. Before we go inside the plant, let me just tell you a little bit more about what Kawasaki builds. Now here in North America, we know about things like the motorcycles and all of the off-road vehicles. Of course, Kawasaki is also pretty famous for the jet ski lineup. But did you know that Kawasaki also builds heavy ships, helicopters, submarines, robot arms, and high-speed bullet trains? Yes, this company manufactures a ton of different things. Now the other thing they're big into, tunnel boring machines. In fact, Kawasaki built maybe the most famous pair of boring machines ever. These guys right here, they're responsible for connecting England and France and tunneling out the Euro Tunnel. Now let's get back here to Lincoln, Nebraska and Kawasaki Motor Manufacturing. This plant employs 3,800 people and it has been operating since 1974. In fact, this is the first foreign vehicle manufacturing plant anywhere in the United States. Now I'll take you inside and show you all the different things they build here at KMM. And we'll start on the Kawasaki Mule line. The Kawasaki Mule is actually credited with being the first side-by-side -side, and you can see them coming together here. Now the frames are assembled and painted in a different part of the factory, same with the engines, and here is where it all starts to come together. Now right here folks, you can see them actually applying the decals. So these have been heated up using that big blowtorch. They stick them on and then they work out all the air bubbles to make sure they're nice and smooth. And as you look down the line, you're gonna see there's all different kinds of models. There's just a regular mule, there's a diesel, there are different colors, different configurations. So it's all over the place. And now we are getting closer to the end of the line. So you can see this thing is pretty much fully assembled. Next step, putting all the rubber on. And then you can see how cool these automated parts are because they actually lift the machine right up to allow the workers to get to those wheels even easier. And you can see the models stay up tall so they can install the uh, bush bar on the front, all the front end components, and then it'll drop back down. Or I guess you can lift it back up like this mule. And that's the cool thing about these carts. They make sure that ergonomically, the workers don't have to bend over or lift too much because you're doing these repetitive motions all day long. So Kawasaki's taking that into account. And here we are getting close to the end of the line. Here's some quality control. The machine rolls up onto a uh, four wheel dyno and they run some uh, QC tests. And these final quality checks are not just engine and drivetrain, it's also the lights, it's the fitment, it's the tilt steering wheel, it's the seats, it's everything on this machine that they double check before it leaves the line. And bye bye to that mule. Now this is a little treat folks. We're up here in uh, what I'd call the toy room. Now every machine you're gonna see in here was built here in Lincoln, Nebraska over the years. Yeah, even the little three-wheeler, that guy was built in 1997. There's a 94 jet ski over there. I love that they have the old snowmobiles. Cowie doesn't do snowmobiles anymore, but they did it one time. Now over here we have an 88 mule, serial number 006. So a lot of these machines are the first examples that were built here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it gives you a great sense for all the different things that Kawasaki produces and has produced over the years. What's going on over here? I like this little camo three-wheeler. That's very cool. And then all the different mule models and then we get into the Terex. Now, yes, Kawi also does the robot arms. Of course, you know about the jet skis, all the old racing jet skis. And all the wheels. Kawasaki is actually the largest wheel manufacturer for all of the uh, ATV and UTV manufacturers. So they build a ton of wheels here at this factory as well. And then finally we get to this corner over here and you start to see the motorcycles. Now they don't build the motorcycles here anymore, but they did for many years. So now 
power and wheel production. And that's how the wheel starts right there. Now this is the robotic welder. And that's going to weld up that inner ring. Now over there you can see the disc, sort of the hub, the center of the wheel. Back there, the uh, edges of the wheel get added on. Now over here, the center of the wheel. And then finally, here's your final inspection. And uh, a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of uh, grinding. But yes, this is right here, the entire wheel process just humming along. Now over here, we have the massive paint booth. And you can see slowly moving wheels over there. And these wheels go into the paint booth. But look, they don't just have wheels here. And they paint things all kinds of different colors. Look at all those colorful ARs. So this is where Kawasaki actually makes just those middle discs that go inside the steel wheels. And it's a six second process with six different punches. And here's the first one. It's going to do its job. Now that disc will get picked up by this little transfer machine. And on to the next punch. And follow it as it goes down the line. Now I can show you here, here's the six different steps, and you have to progressively dye these things because if you were to just try to punch them in one go, the material wouldn't be able to take it. So you have to go step by step by step. And, here they go. and when they come out, they're fed onto this rack. And one in every hundred will go for quality control. And then over to the wheel station where they'll put them all together. And now we have actually come into a whole different building. This is the rail car division. So they're actually building subway cars over here. These bad boys are gonna end up in New York City or Washington DC or another big metro area. Built right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So you can see them actually moving that rail car right now. And there's only two people pushing and that's because it rides on basically an air cushion. Those things are, uh, I mean, an easy way to think about it is an upside down air hockey table. But it's blasting air down into the ground, almost like a hovercraft without a skirt. And that allows them to move these train cars. Now, here in Lincoln, they'll turn out about one 70-foot train car every single day. But you can see just how many they're working on. And not only do they build the train cars, but they'll go so far as to install the advertisements for the specific city that the cars are going to, make sure that they're all stickered upright, they'll put the maps in. So when these things ship, they're ready to go. So two other things to show you here, folks. That right there is one of the biggest car washes in the world. Actually, it has over 100 high-pressure nozzles, and they spray that train with water from every angle to check for leaks. And now over here, you have train tracks coming right into the factory. That's because they do ship some of these trains just straight on the track. So they'll put them on there. That connects to the Union Pacific line, and out they go. Well, we're on to the next line here at the plant, and that is jet ski. Yes, they build all the jet skis here in Lincoln, Nebraska as well. I mean, same process, a little different. The carts look a little bit different. The, uh, the way they manipulate these things is a little bit different. But besides that, so rolling down the line. Getting piece by piece put on. So this is one of the more interesting parts of jet ski production. You can see they apply the epoxy to the upper part of this jet ski, and then they're actually going to bury it down onto the hull, just like that. Before it gets here, the hull has the engine installed and all the internal components, so once you drop the top end on, she's ready for final assembly. And now the press to do its job. And now, folks, you've seen power sports, jet skis, trains, and we get to small engines. Kawasaki is a huge supplier of small engines for mostly lawn tractors, John Deere, Kubota, just about all the brands use small Kawasaki engines, and that's what they're building over here. So this is what they call the building inside the building, and that is research and development where all the cool future stuff is. Now we're not going in there today, we can't show it off, but I'm sure they're working on something neat in there. And it's just funny that it's a building in a building. It's a little R&D fortress in here. All right, guys, so they do a lot of painting here at Kawasaki, but they also dip their own plastics to get different graphics. Now, that looks like a camo graphic to me, and you're going to see he's going to lay it out here, and we're going to dip something. Let's watch.
So what's interesting too is that ink will actually sit on cornstarch that they have down in that water. Now they'll dissolve the cornstarch, leaving just the ink. And we're going to be dipping that over there. It looks like a hood and make it nice and camo. you got a camo hood. There it is. Now the bed of a Kawasaki mule uses this diamond plate steel and well this is the machine that puts that pattern into the metal. Kawasaki has actually found that doing it this way is less expensive than just buying this checker plate and the other advantage is that you can custom make it so if you don't want that pattern in one specific area because that's going to be fitting onto another piece well, they can do that therefore they have a flat surface flat mounting surface if you bought a checker plate from someone else fully formed you would not have that so as you probably have noticed Cowie really brings a lot of these processes in-house and does it themselves Well, folks, we're coming to the end of this video, and you just saw all those parts come together, and this is what they make, a beautiful Kawasaki stand-up jet ski, or something like this Terex KRX 1000 behind me. Now, my biggest takeaway from this tour today is that Kawasaki is not happy with subpar suppliers. If they think they can do it better, they absolutely will, and you saw that in the video. They took all of those processes, brought them in-house, so they don't have to rely on another company's quality, and of course, that works quality that's important here at Kawasaki so folks that is the end of this video like I said so please go below into the comments let me know what you think of all of these different machines as always while you're down there don't forget to hit like hit subscribe hit join to become a member of the channel and then come right back here to TK Power Sports to see what we're testing next see ya